Hey everybody, we're back with another video about the strings inside Logic. I always like to explore what these default things can do. And so we're going to be looking at uh, a, one application of them and one way to make them sound even more realistic. And uh, this is the beginning of a song I'm working on with uh, a co-writer that's based in France. And so without showing you too much about the song, um, because it's still in progress. This is what the beginning sounds like. This is just a placeholder vocal. She's going to be writing words and singing, thank goodness. Um, but this is what the initial melody sounds like with the instrumentation. And what I want to do is add just this low cello section uh, to kind of be like a, a low instrument at the beginning and then maybe do a little bit more kind of a counter melody towards the, the chorus that we're working on. Uh, and so what I have so far is just the basic cello setup like this. We're using the sustain articulation at first, although we could switch to some of the other ones later. And then... Uh, I've got monophonic turned on, so it's just one note at a time. Dynamics via CC, which are turned on. And then you can see in the expanded uh, parameters that I've got dynamic controller set to 16, general number one, and then the vibrato controller to 18, which is general number three. And that is because of this device down here, um, which we can talk about. There's a link to what it is in the description but it is the Expressive E. Um, it uh, is this amazing device which gives us a few different controls. You can push down for one control this way, one control on the top half, and then you have one control to the right and one to the left. I have it turned sideways because I'm gonna play kind of like this. Um, but just to give you a sense, I'm gonna put, push a C here. And then the vibrato is a pull. And then I have a, a split EQ from Eventide, a basic compressor just to even out the levels a little bit. And then I'm sending it through one of my custom impulses from one of the churches I've recorded. Uh, and so not everything here is going to be in the box or in the kit, so to speak, as a, in terms of a default logic thing. The split EQ is the main thing, which is not. Um, I've already done a video on that a little bit. This is just uh, a tool that I'm using to reduce some of the weird tones of the studio cello while not removing some of the transient information. Uh, and so I think... We may have to tweak it, but I think it's in a place right now where I like it in terms of the mix. Uh, next, I'm just going to be playing a part here. I've got the, the score open uh, so that I can remember what the, the changes are and things like that. Uh, I have this button turned on, which is the catch playhead to make sure that it follows it. And I have this in page mode, although I'm thinking about switching it over to one of these. I think I'm going to do this mode right here. Uh, it's a little bit easier to see than in page mode. And um, what I want to do real quick is customize this, play the whole uh, transport here. I'm going to add capture recording because I don't want to necessarily record. Um, I just want to play it a couple times. And if I like one of them, then I'll do the capture record.
of actually like that a little bit. Let's capture that recording. And I think, I see I have, I'm gonna quantize it, but not using the groove track. I'm just gonna quantize it a little bit here. Smart quantize. I did some faster notes, but not too many. I'm just gonna do like a 90%. Let's listen once. So now it's easiest, uh, I think, most of the time. You could always re-record some of the other parts in there, but you can see my data right here is, I mean, that thing is such a fine-tuned thing. Um, but let's come down here, look at our data for a second. There's a couple spots here where I was like, ooh, I don't know. Ooh, let's turn off the loop. And I think it was right when I went up high here. I actually don't know if I like how that sounds. Just a little bit off. So let's try doing an extended there. Okay, so... Go back for one second here and re-record just a little bit. Okay. Ooh, let's undo that. You can see it throws a lot of data in there. I think in this case it may actually be better to draw this in. And we can do this a couple different ways. One of them is just using our pencil tool, but so I'm gonna draw this. I want this to come up and then back down. Let's try that. And then here again. So we're gonna have that build right at the end of that note, push it in, 
and then kind of come back down. Now, let me show you here because you can say, well, the velocities are off there. We're not doing things off of velocities for this because we have the dynamics via CC. So it's ignoring velocity data. And it just does it with whatever the CC's in. So if we want to change it, we have to use one of these drawing tools. And I don't know if I liked... That note is low enough that it's it's giving me a... It's not really popping through very much. Okay, so let's try this again. And I think it actually makes sense. I started playing a little bit after the fact. Let's just do that at the beginning and have it kind of be a low rumble. And I think to sell this, we probably want it to be a little bit more r realistic at the beginning of this. So um, that first note there, let's have it come down a little bit and then build back up. I don't want to do that. So then that second note, let's have it kind of go away just a little bit more and then build back into the next one. I think by this point, some of the vocal stuff will eventually be in here. So again, these are just placeholders. They're not the actual vocal. A few of these held out notes where it's like I'm tempted to actually put some more motion, but if we just put a little swell, I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> And of course, the there's actually going to be words and phrasing and stuff. A lot of this is going to end up being, well, I think it's going to all be in French. And so I think once we actually have the words there and how that's working out, then I'll be customizing this line a little bit more. But I think it actually is not sounding bad considering it's just the default studio strings in Logic. <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
and we'll move it up or down in the mix uh, depending on how that matches out. But I think we're going to be able to use this as the actual string part in this song. I think it's going to sound pretty nice in the scope of the overall mix. So that's kind of where I see studio strings working a lot of the times is something that's a layer rather than, you know, something that's front and center. We do have a couple of things where it goes up and down and the higher range is going to cut through more. And I might need to actually automate some EQ or something to help it blend better because I still think it's sticking out a little bit. But I think it's going to work if we have this place kind of in the right place. We won't know where that place is until the words are in. But I think that um, I think we're on to something with this. OK, I just want to show you this process a little bit. Another example of the studio strings in action, ways that we can use them and uh, come up with something that's actually decent. <laughs> 